Hi everyone and welcome back to Sonic Academy with me, Chris and Yelly, and young Philip Johnson. Hello. Uh, we Hello. We are looking at the new kid on the block, the Bitwig software, studio software. Uh, we've gone through uh, overview and we've looked at some of the devices and now we're looking at some more of the the containers. Containers. So, so this is the really interesting part. Um, and again, Ableton went part of the way there and I think uh, Bitwig have really taken... The next leap. So there's some really cool um, containers. What is a container? It's sort of. It's just something that houses other things. So, for example, we have um, drum machine. Mm -hmm. To be very familiar to anyone that's used Ableton. Drum racks. Looks very like a drum rack. Um, you've got your slots. You can drop any instrument you want. You can drop drums in. You can drop plugins in. You can drop samples in. Absolutely anything you want. And each one can have a chain. Mm -hmm. um, That's kind of a nice idea that you can have sort of uh, synths and samples hybrid. Yeah. So let's see if I hit fold, it shows me my. Electro, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, um, so we could go and throw some samples in here. Let me throw that on top. Can we select multiples? Let me see. It does it chromatically then, does it? Yeah. Yep. Yep. Very good. Cool. So, yeah, basically as drum racks and sorry can you only throw their own uh no you could throw a kicks? you could throw an instrument in as well so i could even throw say uh anna in there and then select the Lap or something in there? Yeah, I think there's some drum signs in here. So there's an a clap. I like this. It's not very clever. Well, drum actually could do that as well. All right. So you could. Okay. Apple, are you listening? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, drum racks. Or drum machine, as it as it's called. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I think that's pretty much it. There's not much else to it. There's no other view the way they have in. I don't think anyway. There's not a like a list view. Right. So, um, I can keep that beat anyway. Might as well just have that in there. And then we have. Let me see some other containers. We have effects chain and effects layer. So effects chain is just multiple effects and they can be all contained in one chain so you can um i'll just load a preset up and you can see so basically a bunch of effects chained together and they're all in one container so they can be saved as a preset yeah okay so we'll, uh, an eq with a compressor and yeah so similar enabled into grouping yeah stuff um, channel strips in, in logic yeah and then we have effects layer. So this would be for parallel effects. So if we wanted to have, say, a distortion and an 8-bit running parallel. So I'll copy this across. So on one one parallel chain we've got um, 
um, our distortion and running parallel, we've got that. So cool. So that's basically it. And then we have something really cool. Um, so we get <coughs> instrument layers as well. So this is again similar idea to effects layers. Only this time you can put instruments. So we can so put a chain of instruments one after the yeah. other. Yeah. Um, layers so they're yeah. stacks yeah. so um, we have polysynth and anana it'd be good if you're building up a lead side and stuff you can you know you exactly can yeah big pads and pick a random preset So yeah, cool. Isn't yeah, it? it's handy enough. And obviously, you can add then effects into that effects chain as well, and save it all as one big mm. preset. So you could have you know three synths all layered up with all the reverbs and all the delays on. Save that as a preset with tags, and then yep. you just load that in. Handy. So okay, mid side split. Actually, I'm going to do the multi band effects first, and then we'll come back to mid side split because I think it, this is. Sort of explains it better. Um, so I'll drop that onto my. I wonder why it's called Multiband FX2. Is there I don't know. I don't see Multiband multi FX1. One. <laughs> so we have uh, two slots, high and low, and then we have a split in the middle. And so you can guess where this is going. It's basically a, a multi band um, filter in the middle or a filter in the middle, two filters in the middle, high and low, crossing over, and you can affect the lows and the highs separately. So, for example, we could let's blur the highs and distort the lows. So one thing you could do, so if you've got a bass line, mm -hmm. you wanted the mono, as you say, mono the, 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 bottom the bottom end. So we could do that easily. We could put on a, uh, a tool. A tool. So mono your bottom end. And spread your top. So handy, you know, bass lines making your subs really nice and chunky and sort of fuzzy and up. And it's worth point out you can add, you know, on the highs you can have effects chains. Yes, yeah, so you can so have multiple effects chain together. On the highs, so we've got blur there and then the tool. Yeah, that's cool. I mean, it's it's a, an, another interesting little. Uh, they've cherry picked some really good ideas from other places, you know, mm. uh, for sure. And then mid side is the same kind of deal, only instead of high and low. We have oh. our mids on our side, so you can um, affect independently the, the mono content or the, the stereo spread content. So, again, for a bass line, if you wanted to just you know focus on that central part and make it really subby, mm -hmm. but make your high part you know, really wide, and yeah. you can do all that. And then we have replacer. So let's see. This is a bit hit and miss. Seems to work okay on kicks. So the idea of this is um, there's a detector, which is detecting um, a, a signal based on um, your frequency that you select here. And then you can add an instrument in here that it triggers. It's not particularly... If you have, I suppose if you had a single... You know, if you've recorded a drum kit and you want to replace the kick and it's on a single yeah. channel. I mean, it seems to be really good for kicks there, yeah. so. so. It's picking up that kick yeah. pretty much perfectly, but if we wanted to get anything else, say we wanted to get the snare, it always seems to pick up the kick, even at high Q factors. We were just discussing it would be nice to have like a negative 
frequency or something where you could detect a kick and then minus that from another replacer. Yeah. Or, or even have a, a listen button so you can pick out this is what we're EQ and this is the area that we're in. Yeah. Uh, cool. S uh, so that's that. And uh, then XY effect and XY instruments. So these are pretty much self-explanatory. Um, I think I have one made. here ready to go. So we have four slots. You can put a different instrument in each slot. It can be an external plugin or an internal plugin. Select different presets, and then you've got an XY pad. We'll do some vector synthesis, yeah. popular with Yamaha and the, yeah, the wave station as well. Wave yeah, station, yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. So very handy, and this and the same thing works for the effects. You can put four effects chains in and modulate between them, and that can obviously be modulated. It can be assigned to different. Um, Modulation sources as well. Really, really like this. I like, I like that. That sort of idea of again, it's about building up. You know, you could put in four saw pads in there and just, you know, save that as your chain. You could just have these massive pads. Saved yeah, and, and DSP seems CPU doesn't seem too yeah, bad there. We're starting to creep up a bit more, but so there we go. Um, we've got. Um, some note effects as well, arpeggiator. You can select your different modes. Up, down, down, up, up and down. Yeah, and let's fire a synth on there afterwards. Let's see what it sounds like. Find this browser. I find it a little bit ugly. It's not. Yeah. It's not. I don't know. Everything I would like to be able, you know, I suppose you can right click, just right click there and s see it all, which is probably handier in certain situations. Cool, you can have gate for independent notes. Yeah. So it's a retrig, yeah. And then you can use the transport shuffle. Now, I, I believe this is a known error that, that doesn't pick up the shuffle yet. Yeah. So I guess they're they're working on that. We know that. Yeah. And again, that'll be useful for sending node information through to you know the the arpeggiator, and then the node information that goes through to filters and stuff if they're not picked up. Mm -hmm. Who's using shuffles? So now. then shuffle, uh, probably because uh, I'm, I'm not too familiar with Ableton. There's n that's a master shuffle there. They kind e of put yes. in now, and you just then switch it on. Is yeah, you can do independent. Clip shuffling and okay. master shuffle. Okay. I'm shuffling. Yeah, there isn't. Doesn't seem to be like a, a groove a template. Groove template. Yeah. You know, we can grab a glue. I think. I wonder is there in actual clips? Let me see. So. Yeah. So it's just shuffle. Yeah. There's no groove templates yet. And. Yeah, what are the note effects? We've got diatonic transposer. So this is a scale plugin. So you're, you're playing a minor chord and it's minor, forcing yeah. it into major. Playing major chord. And hit minor. We've got a nice thing here of constraining notes, keep notes, or filter notes. So, so I'll, I'll play a, a major chord and hit minor. It's actually just getting rid of okay, so those notes. The wrong yeah. ones, right? Keeping them. Okay, that's interesting. So, what's if they're keeping the notes? Is there any? 
not sure. Um, so, yeah, there's that. Note filter. So it's just a, a velocity sort of. So you're hitting it softly and yeah. it's filtering it out. Yeah. And then, so this could be good for um, manual key mapping and layering. So you could put the note filter into the effects chain or an instrument chain. Mm -hmm. You know the way we had like the uh, the layers. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So you could have it where your bass plays down at the bottom. Oh, okay, and yes, your yes. your uh, your pad plays up at the top. Oh. That would be really handy, actually. Or you could have it so you have you know an octave of drums, an octave of bass, and an octave of yeah. synth. You know what I mean? That's very cool. Um. Pitch shifter, so I'm guessing this is just a pitch, yeah. That's handy, we just have buttons for octave up and octave down. Semitones and fine. Cool. And a transposition map. So this is like sp this is similar to the scale thing in Ableton, where you can actually go in and select where you want each individual note to be transposed to. <laughs> yeah, so you can sort of manually <coughs> put in you your own keys. Do I'm you sure use that, that in Ableton at all? No, no. not really. Okay. Um, it doesn't come with any presets. It'd be nice maybe if it came with you know, minors, yeah. color skills. Yeah. And that's it. We've got hardware effects and hardware instruments. So if you've got any external, external. stuff, you can just plug that in through your um, sound card inputs and outputs. And that's it. Okay, cool. Uh, guys, that's uh, a run through the devices. Uh, in the next video, we're going to start... Start making a track, some putting s some stuff together and see how it works in operation with clips and um, cool. arrangement and stuff. All right, guys. See you all in the next video.